The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. This is Rob McConnell. I am in the Exxon on Talkstar. Our toll-free number is 1-800-610-7035 or 1-877-528-8255. Email exxon at talkstarradio.com on MSN Messenger, talkstarradio at hotmail.com. And our websites, www.xzoneradio.com and xzonetv.com. My guest this hour is Carol Taylor, and uh, Carol lives in Welland, Ontario. And she is the uh, lady behind the Niagara Area Paranormal Society. Their website is www.paranormalinvestigations.net. Now, at the age of uh, two, Carol had her first encounter with the spirit of an elderly lady. After, after living in several homes that had activity, it soon became apparent to Carol that she had a gift for communicating with those who were deceased. Carol began her journey into finding answers and started to investigate on her own when she was in her early teens. After several years of investigating and researching all she could on the subject, Carol founded an online community where she was responsible for teaching others how to research and investigate activity in their own homes and businesses. After being involved in this online community for quite some time, she made the decision to expand upon her knowledge and became more seriously involved in collecting data and research in this field. That is when she founded the paranormal research group now called Niagara Area Paranormal Society, or NAPS. Now, their, t- their current uh, team consists of 12 members. They investigate paranormal activity throughout the Niagara region. Their team is well established in the area and have had several media appearances that include newspapers, radio, TV, and uh, most recently an appearance in Cineplex theaters across Canada on the pre show. Besides research in this field, Carol just completed her second successful season of teaching courses locally. Participants of the course have the opportunity to learn basics about investigating and then have an opportunity to investigate local haunted locations with seasoned investigators at their side to help guide them. Carol Taylor now joins me from Welland, Ontario. And Carol, always great having you here with us in the X-Zone. And tell me... Is Niagara still as haunted as it was when I was spending most of my days at 610 CKTB in St. Catharines? Yes, it is. (laughs) We're actually a very busy group. (laughs) How many calls a week would you get about paranormal activity in Niagara? Um, On average, um, our team investigates two a month. Wow. And and the other two weeks of the month are used to go over evidence, so we're busy every single weekend. That that is that is amazing. That much paranormal mm-hmm. activity, and is, yes. do you believe there's a specific reason why Niagara is so haunted? Um, it could be because you know our a lot of history in this mm-hmm. area with battles and whatnot. Um, I think though, due to um, media uh, such as TV, kind of reporting these kind of things, that people are more open to it. So maybe that's why we're getting more calls and stuff. Carol, you and I have to take a two-minute commercial break. When we come back, can you share with us some of the investigations that you and the other fine members of NAPS have uh, conducted over the past year? Sure. All right, sounds great. Carol Taylor is my special guest. And we're going to be back in two minutes as Carol and I further investigate the world of the paranormal in Niagara. one 528 is toll-free. 
Email exxon at talkstarradio.com on MSN Messenger, talkstarradio at hotmail.com and our websites, www.exxonradio.com and xzonetv.com. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Carol Taylor and I will be back on the other side of this two-minute break. Don't go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.x. ZBN.net. Carol Taylor is my guest to this hour, Exo Nation. She is the lady behind Niagara Area Paranormal Society. Their website is www.paranormalinvestigations.net. You do two investigations a month in Niagara, and uh, you and I were discussing prior to the commercial break why the Niagara is so haunted, and you know it has been the scene of many historical battles, the War of eighteen twelve, and, and you know the yes. and so on. Uh, what are, type of investigations are you doing now, and is there any connection between the investigations that you're doing in the year two thousand and nine? And the happenings of the War of 1812. Um, we have investigated some that were directly related to it. Um, one, for example, was Drummond Hill Cemetery. It's actually the only cemetery that our um, team has gone to to investigate, mm-hmm. and that was specifically due to you know what happened on that site with the uh, the battle. And uh, other than that, we have been called to other locations that are have his- historical significance. Uh, such as the Mildred Mahoney Dollhouse in Fort Erie. Oh, yeah. Um, That one has actually been a very interesting um, location for us. We've had the opportunity to investigate there several times, so we've been able to collect a lot of data from that location. Um, But most of the investigations we do conduct in the region are actually private homes. Let's just go back to the dollhouse for a moment because sure. uh, th- th- there is a lot of activity that is going on there. And what kind of evidence yes. have you and your team been able to collect pertaining to paranormal activity at that uh, doll museum? In that location, actually, we were uh, during our recent filming uh, with Cineplex, we were actually featured at that uh, location. And uh, over the past couple of years that we've been there, we've been able to collect thousands of pieces of audio, not just a couple. So it's been very active for us. Um, we do have a couple uh, pieces of video mm-hmm. uh, with lights going on and off by themselves. And uh, we have another piece of video where um, all of the investigators were in a downstairs location and we had a camera running upstairs. And it looks like something goes in front of the camera very quickly it's like a white flash, but it, we couldn't account for what that was. Was the camera on a tripod? Yes, it was on a tripod, yep. 
and it was an infrared camera. So at that point, we had accounted for everybody, and uh, we couldn't explain what that was. All right, take us through the course of an investigation of one of the homes that you've investigated where people actually believe that paranormal activity is happening. From the time you get the call, what is the first step you do? The first step I would do is I would actually interview the person, and I would ask them a series of questions that are more specific to the activity. It could be such as, like, are you experiencing sounds, smells, etc.? And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see um, if there's certain people, certain things happening at that location that might explain some of it. And then once we go there, I usually I don't tell my team members what exactly has taken place in that location. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I do that is because I want them to be as objective as possible once we arrive there. So, for example, if somebody was you know, murdered or died in a certain room, I wouldn't say that to my teammates because even though you try to be objective, if you had that piece of information, it might, you know, in the back of your mind come up during the investigation. So they have no idea, like, like what has taken place. They just know that some activity is happening and that we're there to investigate. There are some things that I will let them know, like, for example, if somebody has seen something in a certain area of the... Um, location, I might tell them that so that we can try to check out in the environment to see if there's a natural explanation for what's occurring. So, for example, if someone's saying to me, I'm feeling really uneasy in a certain uh, room, what we will do is when we go in there, we will actually check out with our equipment, um, EMF meters specifically, to see if there are high EMF fields in that location that might cause a person to feel like they are experiencing something. And a lot of times it could be due to old wiring in a a home or a business. And that, we have found through our research, can influence a person's uh, way of thinking. And it can actually cause them to feel like something's there when it actually has more to do with something natural. Now, you say your team of of investigators. What type of training do the investigators get and and, uh, to be called investigators? Um, A lot of the times uh, they've already, like some of the people on my team, they've already been um, investigating on their own before they even come to us. But um, I kind of run them through the same sort of thing that I do with my courses. Uh, We go through um, like the protocols and procedures of our our specific group. Um, Some of them is uh, quite like to do with common sense, like we wouldn't take pictures outdoors if it's raining, Um, to look in the environment. I go through a whole like Mm hands-on experience with them. And that's before, you know, they can be called like an investigator on our team. So they actually have quite a bit of experience before, you know, that occurs. And uh, we run them through like on the equipment and whatnot. And so they kind of know like what to look for before they even get more deeply involved. What type so of it's equipment? Kind of like a training session that we go through with them. What type of equipment do you use? You mentioned EMF meters, which is electromagnetic. Uh... Yes, we have uh, quite a bit of equipment, but we use infrared cameras, we have laptops, we have several different types of EMF meters. Um, We have digital and wireless audio, infrared thermometers, uh, video recorders, we have DVR system, and sometimes we also will experiment with a variety of equipment to try out different techniques that see what works, and that would include what we call trigger objects. So, for example, if we're called to a location where a child has been seen, we might bring along toys and try to see if we can get it to react to a toy. Or if it's just, say, um, a person that seems to be dressed in, I don't know, let's say 1930s -hmm. type of attire, we might bring in music from that time period to try to see if we can get, you know, better results with it. So tell me, do, do these... Entities, do these spirits, do these ghosts, do these paranormal beings actually leave trace evidence that you can catalog? Yes, we have had, like I said, it's very, it's actually very hard to get anything on video. Like in all of the years I've been investigating, we've only had maybe a handful of things on video. But with audio, it seems like it's easier to get for whatever reason. And I, we literally have thousands of pieces of audio evidence. Now, as a, as, as a researcher into the paranormal, 
Doesn't that doesn't that uh, raise flags for you that using the same technology video because also on video you would also have the audio that mm-hmm. you're not getting EVPs on the video audio on the audio track of the video that you're using you're only getting it on the video reco- on the audio recorders. Um, no, we have had it on the video. Oh, you have well, okay. But we just haven't captured any like uh, video of something moving oh, I'm sorry. or okay. you, it's kind of like. A, um, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to catch something that might happen in a certain area, I guess. But uh, with audio, we have captured stuff on our uh, video, just on the audio portion mm-hmm. of it, but just not on the video portion. What has been to your to uh, what has been to this date your most hardcore proof that the paranormal does exist? Um. It probably, I'd have to say probably the Mahoney Dollhouse, and that the reason for that probably, because we've had the opportunity to investigate there several times, but uh, even recently, uh, during that filming uh, with on the pre-show for Cineplex, mm-hmm. uh, we were at the, that's, I don't know if I've told you before, but uh, it used to be an underground railway at one point, yeah. and uh, it has a lot of history to it, and uh, also a person was hung in the basement during the Finian raids. Mm-hmm. for raping someone. And we've had a lot of uh, really <laughs> far-out stuff happen in there. Um, what hit, what, that, all right, what's, what's happened that is far-out? Uh, well, during that particular investigation, usually when we go in, uh, we had most of our team members present at that uh, specific investigation. And usually what we do is we split up into two teams. So one group will be investigating the lowest part of the building, and the other uh, group would be investigating the, just say, the top portion of the building. And we had um, motion sensors set up in the basement, and the team that was not, like, not my half of the team, but the other half, they were able on command to get this motion sensor to go off by itself by asking, can you please let the motion sensor go off? And this was filmed uh, with people present from Cineplex. Uh, all right, and but but here, you know, this is... This is where I this is where I have to ask the cynical questions. Mm-hmm. Because it was filmed for Cineplex, is it possible that this was rigged? No, definitely not. <laughs> We're more interested in the the research end of it. So and if we decide right, we let would me, lose credibility. <laughs> let me ask this then. How can something that cannot be seen that has no mass or density trigger a motion detector? See, that we, we are unsure of how they're able to do it. We know that, like, in uh, other investigations as well as there, they're able to affect our equipment as well. Have and you gone to... Now, now, in St. Catharines, you have one of the best universities in Canada, Brock University. Have you gone to Brock and seen members of their scientific community that are there and say, this is what we do, this is what happens, this is the results? Can you explain it? No, not yet. No, we haven't had that opportunity. Why not? But that would definitely be a good idea to check it out. Well, see sure. If they could. Because, you know, if us. something that has no mass. And on command, too, to do that for us. So during that specific investigation, when we, went, when we had a chance, like our uh, team had a chance to go down, I asked the same thing. If, mm-hmm. You know, you did it for them. Can you do it for us? And the motion sensor went off. Who supplied and then the motion sensor? We tried sensor? to recreate it, and nothing happened. It was completely silent. Who supplied so the motion sensor that day? That was our part of our equipment. And are, is sensor. is all equipment tested before and oh, in, yeah. uh, research? Yep. It's all, yep, it's all New tested batteries by our and the whole equipment bit? managers. Yep. All right, stand by. We've got to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exo Nation. Carol Taylor is our special guest. Her website is www.paranormalinvestigations.net. That's paranormalinvestigations.net. And we'll be back on the other side of the news break as we continue live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, right here in the X Zone, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. The show is then repeated in its entirety from 2 until 6 one 877 is toll-free. Email xzone at talkstarradio.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, 
at WPBN TV. For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, sense this product is a real winner to learn more about 123 ready tv visit our website at www.xzbn.net welcome back everyone carol taylor is our special guest and we're talking to carol about ghosts of niagara so to speak carol uh, leads a group of investigators and researchers who investigate claims of the paranormal throughout niagara and uh, her contact information is www.paranormalinvestigations.net. Carol, before we went to the break, uh, we were talking about the the haunted doll house uh, in mm-hmm. Fort Erie, and that during one of the uh, investigations into the paranormal activity in that doll house, you had put infrared sensors in areas, and apparently, upon command the sensor would go on and off by an unknown source. Yes. Now, as far as I know, sensors require mass in mm-hmm. order to trigger yeah. the, the, the infrared reaction that shows the sensor is going off. Yes. How do you explain this, and do you go to seek professional advice uh, on how this can be done, or do you just leave it as paranormal? Um, in that situation, we we are very unsure of like how that is able to occur. We just know that we were able to get a reaction. A lot of times when we're using uh, equipment and whatnot, we really don't know what works and what's what's not going to work. Sometimes on an investigation, for example, with the motion sensor, mm-hmm. we might have been able to get it off to, to go off on command, and then another time we're back there, we don't get any reaction from it. Um, we do check our equipment before and, uh, like, we start an investigation to see if it's all working properly. And uh, in that situation with uh, what you asked, do we go to professionals yes. or whatnot, yeah. I have talked to um, some people that were, you know, different fields, elect- electricians and whatnot, to see, you know, what their take is on certain things. Mm-hmm. And, again, they can't explain why something, like, in that situation would go off as well did you, did there you is call no mass present. Did you call up the manufacturer, explain to them what the situation was, and ask them for any explanation that they might know? Could it have been the frequency, a certain frequency of a voice that triggered the uh, sensors? Were the sensors in, highly in that, sensitive? Oh, you know? Sorry, in that situation, no, we did not call up the manufacturer and ask. Why but not? that is something we could, you know, include and try to do. Uh, as I was saying, sometimes even with all of the equipment we have, we've had situations where, for ex- for example, something has moved on its you know on its own, and we can't explain it. But none of our equipment was affected, 
And then there's other times where uh, we don't see anything happening and our EMS might go, our EMS meter might go off. So again, you know, yes, it's but, kind of... Uh, but we know that electromagnetic fields move. They're not fixed. That's you, right. You can have yeah. an electromagnetic field showing mm -hmm. zero in one second and the very next second mm -hmm. it, it, it shows a reading and it has nothing to do with uh, uh, anything in the paranormal. It's a, it's a normal, natural phenomenon. That's right. And usually bef when we go into an investigation, that was something I <laughs> forgot to mention earlier, we always do base readings before we even start out. So we're looking for um, the base reading for EMFs in, in each room mm -hmm. and also temperature. So that way, if there are any fluctuations during the investigation that we can't account for, then that's something we would examine in the environment to see if there is something naturally occurring that's setting it off. How many different uh, ghost investigation organizations are there throughout Niagara? Um, that I'm not sure of. I'm not sure. I know there's a couple I've mm -hmm. heard of, but I'm not sure exactly how many to tell you. There is. Yeah, well, if someone was to take your, your, your course, what would they, what would they learn? Um, what we teach them is try to, again, look into the environment. There's so much mis misinformation out there right mm -hmm. now in the media, uh, with TV shows and whatnot. And uh, just to show them a realistic point of view, like exactly what we go through when we go into investigation, and to show them that it's not all like exciting things flying around through the air and whatnot, that a lot of it is paperwork and a lot of it's boring and and you're sitting there sometimes for hours looking at a, an empty room or, or even when you're going through your evidence, you're just sitting there for hours and hours uh, looking through um, your audio or your video and not getting anything. Mm -hmm. So I tried to show them that uh, instead of, you know, jumping to conclusions and trying to say that, you know, something's paranormal, to, to take a look around and see, again, if there's natural explanations in the environment, such as high EMF fields due to artificial, um, you know, wiring or whatnot, instead of something paranormal. But as I was saying, uh, the, the Great Lakes area is very well known for its... Uh, it's it's uh, variant electromagnetic fields that yes. that are not steady yes. and not secure. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we so we would learn how to use the different equipment and mm -hmm. I guess how to take baseline readings. Yes. How about in, how about interviewing techniques? The uh, the yes, interviews. Yes, I go that through the interview. Yeah, I I talk to them about like what questions I ask during the interview mm -hmm. process. We talk about gathering evidence, like with EVPs, what we look for, how we distinguish between something residual rather than interactive. Uh, we talk about all of that during the course. And then they also, after the course, they get a chance to actually investigate a haunted location with us, and we are by their side as they you know, use some of our equipment and whatnot, and we go through the whole investigation with them. And how long does the course take? It usually runs um, from, just say, 4.30 to 10 p.m., so you're looking at about six hours. And where would, where would you have the course? Is it done in uh, association with Niagara College or any of the other accredited uh, places? No, I have actually, because there's nothing like this around in the area, I've actually uh, run it at two different locations. One was the Welland Museum. Mm -hmm. And one was the Mildred Mahoney dollhouse. And uh, and and uh, how much does this course cost? Um, I charge seventy five dollars a person. I have to ask so you. That, I have to ask you. I've been on your. I went to your website earlier today, mm -hmm. and and you've got an arcade game on your website. Yes. <laughs> why do, yeah. why why would you have an arcade game on a site that you're trying to present as credible? Um, we have different stuff on there. Like I don't even, uh, just besides like uh, paranormal stuff, I have UFO stuff on uh -huh. there. I have cryptozoology. So I have different interests. And that was actually, you know, carried out for the benefit of the members. Uh, sometimes some people just go on there to read. Sometimes they go on there to, you know, interact on our site. And again, part of that would be the arcade game. Do you think by having an arcade game on a site that you're trying to present as professional maybe a little counterproductive not really not in that sense no okay i don't think this is just my opinion 
That's all. Mm-hmm. I can see where you're coming from, like what you're saying. You know, because people people are are starting to look at paranormal groups as a little bit out there, especially with all the weird stuff on TV. Now, here's a question. During mm-hmm. your paranormal investigations, do you investigate with the lights on or lights off? Um, we Just because of our infrared cameras, that's the only reason why we investigate with the lights off. But actually, most of the things I've experienced have happened with the lights on, <laughs> like during the day. You know, infrared, but that's the only reason why we do it at night. Do you know infrared cameras work with the lights on as well? Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. But we're trying to see in the infrared fields, It'll automatic- which our naked eye cannot see. No, I understand that. I understand that. So even if you're using a monitor going through the camera and showing you the infrared, mm-hmm. anything that is in that room that is in the infrared spectrum will show up on the infrared monitor. So I, you oh, know, yes, I so know, I don't yeah. under, I, I don't understand why people in the investigations of the paranormal shut the lights off. It makes no sense to me. Well, and we're also looking to see if anything anomalous will happen with uh, lights maybe showing up, you know, while the the lights are off or or whatnot. So we're looking at different things. But as I was saying before, just because, you know, we investigate at night doesn't mean that's the only time, you know, stuff happens. And that's also another misconception that I've seen in the media. Well, don't you think it's by organizations and uh, and groups who go out at night instead of turning lights on, shut the lights off, that this may be where the media is getting the misinformation? I don't think so, because I think, you know, with us, you know, trying to be and try to do everything we can to experiment, I guess, with different things, um, mm-hmm. I don't see it that way. Do you bring? Cre- I guess uh, I can see what your your point of view is coming from, but do you bring um, credible people in to ca- to investigate with you? Members of the scientific community, members of the psychological community, yeah, to to do parallel investigations with you. And we do have some of those kind of members as part of our team. Like we do have, I have a social worker on my team. I have a uh, psychiatric nurse on my team. I have a person who is uh, works for security for a casino. All right, now so that's we do no, have no, a no. Lot wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a nurse. I'm mm-hmm. not talking about a security guard. I'm talking about professionals. I'm talking about a scientist. I'm talking about a, a doctor who has a PhD behind his name. I'm talking about a scientist, and then I'm talking about uh, you know people who actually can help out decipher what it may be that you're investigating that you're that you're collecting evidence that you believe may be in fact paranormal well as i said we you know with what resources we have we do the best we can when it comes to uh, data collecting um if something were to come up like that yes i would contact somebody um you know we just do the best we can with what we have have you approached Outside sources to use yes, them and I bring have, them in. Yes, I have approached outside sources, you and? know, when it came to certain, um, with our equipment, working in a certain way, asking, you know, what would cause this, mm-hmm. um, reading up on it on with outside uh, sources online or whatnot, and trying to figure out, you know, what would happen and what kind of environmental influences would uh, cause a certain thing to happen. Okay. So out of the two investigations a month that you do, how many investigations have you come up with that are not paranormal? Um, Actually, quite a few. We've had um, some uh, private homes, for example, that we've come up with that had nothing to do with anything paranormal, Mm -hmm. had more to do with uh, electrical problems in the home or whatnot. Um, Some of the things, like some of the claims... For example, I guess I'll give you an example. One time we got called into a private home, and one of the claims was is that the refrigerator door was open and the cupboards were opening. And they told us that um, they could stand there, close the fridge door, they could leave the room, come back 10 minutes later or even five minutes later, and the fridge door would be open. So even as, you know, strange as that sounds, when we went into that location, we have to check out these things and see what natural explanation could be causing it. And in that situation, it was just weak magnets of the refrigerator. So even though you could close it, you could stand there maybe 15 minutes later, and it would slowly open up by itself. Which means and the refrigerator wasn't level. 
Yeah, and exactly. So this is stuff that we get called into all the time, that, and some people think because it's happening and they you don't have an explanation for it, they just assume it's something paranormal. And even with the cupboard doors, like we have to go in there, and we have to check, like is the latch loose, is something happening, is if the door is opening, is suction happening, and the doors are opening by themselves, and a lot of times that could be the case. Do you bring members of the clergy along with you? No, we don't. Why not? For what? <laughs> Why would we bring them along? <laughs> Why wouldn't you, if you're investigating the paranormal? Well, we we tried to leave the religious aspect out of it. Um, when it comes to that stuff, no, we don't bring clergy along. Do you bring a psychic? A psychic, no, no. Do you, so? Who do you bring? We have just our own team investigators uh, from all walks of life. We don't have. We I could say we have some people on our team who are sensitive, mm-hmm. but I guess you could consider it psychic. But as far as bringing psychics along, no, we don't because, again, we're trying to explain something. And it would be hard to explain something with something else that has no explanation for it, such as psychics. Jeez, I don't know. My good friend uh, Chip Coffey, who's uh, doing some stuff with Penn State Paranormal, seems to be an asset to their team. And that's good. That works for their team. So why wouldn't it work for your team? We just just haven't used it. I don't have anything against using psychics on a team. Mm -hmm. We just haven't used it ourselves. All right. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, we're just running out of time here. So I'd, uh, you know, keep up the great work. Niagara certainly is haunted. And um, we'll look forward to checking in with our, with you and uh, seeing what else is happening with the uh, people at Niagara Area Paranormal uh, Investigations. Thank you, Carol. Take care of yourself and we'll... Uh, We'll check in with you later on. Exxon Nation, 1-877-528-8255 is toll free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. When we come back, I'm going to take a recap on this story. Something just doesn't make sense, and when it doesn't make sense to me, I share it with you. Something about that infrared sensor sensor, that infrared sensor story doesn't sit right and we're going to get our research department to check it out when we come back we'll try and give you the explanation on why that sensor was triggered 1-877-528-8255 is toll free this is the x-zone and you're listening to us live and around the world on talkstar don't go away we'll be back and when we come back we will have an answer on that mystery sensor being triggered don't go away This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Oh, welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. You know what that means. Uh, Someone on tonight's show bit the dust. Our guest tonight, Dr. Shelley Carr, was with us. Uh, Tara Green, Jose Escamilla, and Carol Taylor from a group of uh, investigators in Niagara. And uh, another one bites the dust was for Carol Taylor and her gang. Uh, I found a lot of very strange inconsistencies with the interview. Number one, we checked with a couple of manufacturers of infrared sensors, and they say, no, it will not. An infrared scanner will not pick anything up that does not have mass. High frequencies may set the scan may uh, set the uh, scanners off. Heat uh, deviations may, in very rare cases, set it off. But as far as ghost investigations are concerned, they know that the infrared scanners are being used for ghost investigations by people. They are being sold on ghost investigation sites, but they are not meant for that. And to the very best of three manufacturer that we've spoken to. Something has to have mass in order to set it off, and no one that we've talked to today has ever 
had the experience of a sensor going off on demand. So there we go. Uh, plus the fact that Carol charges $75 for these courses. These courses are not accredited. She has arcade an arcade game on her website. And in my book, this doesn't show credibility. It shows a little bit of woo-wooism. And um, a lot has to be done when you call someone an investigator. I don't call them investigators. At the very best, they're hobbyists. They're not trained in the art of investigation. They do not take courses. They do not know how to maintain the chain of evidence. It's a hobby. And once again, we have another example where people who are getting onto this bandwagon, calling themselves investigators and experts, who really do not have the experience it needs to be in this field as a true investigator. Take a course in psychology. Take a course in physics. Take a course in, sci- in one of the sciences related to this. Take a psychology course. Then you're just scratching the surface at, of what a paranormal investigator should be. When it comes to the paranormal, I think there should be a governing body that that takes all these so-called investigators, puts them to the test, licenses them, because these people affect other people's lives. And if you do that, you should be held accountable. So that's it for tonight, everyone. Once again, uh, to all of you, thank you for allowing us to be part of your day or night, no matter where you are in this great big world of ours. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow night at 10 o'clock as once again we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. If you dare to believe someone that you bring into your house who claims to be a paranormal expert or a paranormal investigator, ask them about their credentials. Ask them if they've taken a bona fide course, a course given by professionals. Ask them if they have any degrees in their names. Nine times out of ten, they don't. This is where you should draw the line and get professional help. So until tomorrow night, uh, here on the Exxon, to my wife and senior producer, the lovely Laura Rogers, and to the Exxon Nation, thank you for allowing us to be part of your day or night, no matter where you are. Until tomorrow night, keep your eyes to the sky, your heart to the light, and your money in your pocket.